Hello and welcome to our introductory quick start video for V-Ray for SketchUp. In this video, we'll go over the basics of using V-Ray in SketchUp and how to get productive right away. Launch SketchUp. Here we're using version 2017 and load the project file shown below. I'm keeping some space open on my desktop for a few other windows I'll put there in just a minute or so. When you have V-Ray for SketchUp installed, you'll notice that it has added three new toolbars to the interface. This is the main toolbar, which includes the Asset Editor, Render button, and a button for the V-Ray Frame Buffer, also known as the VFB, which is a window that displays your renders. Next to the main toolbar is the Lighting toolbar, which allows you to create and place V-Ray lights in your scene. Next to that is the Geometry Toolbar, which gives you access to very specific geometry like the Infinite Ground Plane, Proxies, and Fur, for example. Go ahead and click this icon to open the Asset Editor. This is the nerve center for V-Ray for SketchUp and is divided into four sections. The Materials, which allows you to see all the V-Ray specific materials shown in the Material List tab here. Click over to the Quick Settings tab and you'll be able to edit the material options for the selected material, which right now is Gray 3. Click over to the Lights section to see a list of the lights already in the scene. Here we just see the sunlight we have right now. The next icon over is the Geometry Editor, which would list any very specific geometry in the scene, such as fur. The Gear icon takes us to the fourth and last section, Settings which gives us access to edit the render options for the scene. The icons in the upper right are a render button and a button to show or hide the VFB just like in the main toolbar. Now let's start an interactive render. Make sure your settings match a scene here and click the render button to get going. The VFB launches and we can see the render. With interactive rendering, changes made to the scene are updated automatically. For example, enable SketchUp's Shadows toolbar, and then enable Shadows and the Scene View updates. Since these SketchUp settings are already feeding into the V-Ray renderer, the interactive render in the VFB updates as well, and that the shadows are consistent. Set the time of day to about noon, and the VFB updates as well as the view. To keep things speedy, disable shadows in SketchUp itself. Go ahead and change the date as well to see how the sunlight changes. Change the time of day, like to the evening, and you'll see that the sunlight not only changes direction, but also its color as well, changing the sky background for a dusk setting. Experiment for yourself, but when you're ready, go ahead and set this to a late morning time and sometime in August. Bring up the Asset Editor. In the Materials, we can select the material to edit by picking the Paint Bucket icon in the SketchUp UI, and then hold down the Alt key and click on the Scene object to display its material. The Asset Editor, of course, displays the same material as SketchUp's own UI. Now let's go back to the stucco material to replace it with either a material that we make or a pre-made one. Click the arrow here to expand the Asset Editor to get access to the Material Library. Go to the Wall Paint and Wallpaper category and scroll down to find Stucco F01. Now simply drag its icon over to the settings on the right and you'll see it as a material in the scene. To replace the existing material of the stucco, right click on the Stucco F01 material and then select Copy. Using the Paint Bucket and holding down the Alt key again, select the existing stucco on the building to display its material. Then right click on Stucco 1 and choose Paste. This will take all the parameters from the copied material and lay it on top of the assigned material. Take note that the material we copied has a size already associated with it, 50 centimeters. So go to the Edit tab in the SketchUp UI and set the size accordingly in there. 50 centimeters is about 20 inches, so enter that for the horizontal value and it updates a vertical as well. Now let's swap out this grass. Select the grass material just like we did before and you'll get grass too. In the ground category in the material library, you'll find several grass materials available. 
Drag grass C over to the right to bring it into the scene. Then, just as before, right click on grass C and copy it. Select grass 2, right click on it and paste the new grass. Go to edit the material size since it's not looking very good here. Now although 200 centimeters is about 6.5 feet, we'll enter 10 feet for this material and now that gives us a more realistic grass look. Now finally, let's address the glass material and get that looking nicer. Go to the glass category in the library and drag glass window neutral into the scene. Right click on it to copy it to the clipboard. Select the glass object in the scene itself to bring up its material, glass 3. Right click on that to paste the glass from the library and the interactive render updates in the VFB to show us a much nicer glass look. Now it is a bit dark inside that space so let's get to work on some lighting. Click the arrow to close the material library and switch to the lights section. We only have sunlight but it's easy to place new lights in the scene. Click the lock camera orientation icon and this lets us move the camera without updating the interactive rendering so we can quickly zoom inside the house. Once inside, click the plain light icon in the toolbar and then go ahead and place the plain light on the ceiling like so and then go ahead and click back to the select tool. Make sure the light is placed just below the ceiling. Notice in the VFB that the light is now showing, especially if I shift the time to night you can really see it light up inside. Click the arrow to expand the right panel for the light properties. Adjust the intensity to brighten the light. By default these are in scalar units, but you have the option of changing the units for each light as you prefer. We can also turn geometry objects into lights as well. Navigate in your scene to find this piece of geometry set into the overhang here outside the window and go ahead and select it. Click on the mesh light icon in the toolbar and V-Ray converts that geometry into a light which you can see a little bit here in the render. It also displays it in the asset editor which I can adjust to taste. You can also enter a value greater than the display range to get even a brighter light. I'll go ahead and set this to about 60. Now set the time of day again to late morning and let's go back to the final scene view by clicking the appropriate tab. Let's work out a nicer grass. I want to assign grass using V-Ray Fur to just this part of the geometry to stay efficient and not have grass over the entire ground plane. Now this has already been set up to let you do that in the scene by cutting out that piece of grass in the geometry here. Select that geometry and click the fur icon in the toolbar. This adds V-Ray fur parameters to that object. So in the asset editor, click on the geometry section and there it is. To begin with, this is set up at default to already mimic grass, but there is a lot you can do with fur beyond this, which we'll examine in a later video. Turn off the lock camera orientation button and move the camera down a bit and settle into a view sort of like this. You'll notice that there are actual blades of grass being rendered. Now one more thing to go over in this video is how to set up depth of field for the project. Click over to the settings section in the asset editor and click open the camera section. Enable depth of field and the VFB will update to use depth of field. Adjust the defocus value and you'll really notice the lens blur come in, with the focus pretty close to the camera. Click the Pick Focal Point button and select a point on the wall of the house and right away the house is in focus and the rest of the scene is blurred. Now this is a bit much, so set the defocus value to about 0.45 to give us a hint of depth of field in the foreground and the background. Now let's get this going for a final render. Stop the interactive render by clicking the stop icon in the VFB. Click to expand the render output section in the asset editor. Set the image size to a square of 900 by 900. Now of course you can render out the size and aspect ratio you wish by selecting your own aspect ratio or setting your own custom one. 
We'll leave ours at 900 by 900 square. At the top of the window, disable interactive since this is going to be a final image. What progressive does is that the renderer will render the entire image quickly and then continue to increase the quality in the whole image over time. You can set your desired quality level here with the quality slider, which balances quality of the render with time spent rendering. I'm going to set mine to high. Make sure to realign your view by clicking the final scene tab and then click the render button. V-Ray goes through its steps and you can see it develop in the VFB as I elapse some time while the system renders the final image and resolves to the high quality that I set a moment ago. As I mentioned, the progressive render will render the entire image quickly at first and then resolve it to the quality level desired over time, allowing you to see your image in its entirety without waiting for parts of the frame to fill in as the renderer continues. And here we have our rendered house. Thank you for joining us for this quick start video introducing workflows in V-Ray for SketchUp. Uh.